Okay, two minutes. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jody Brazzi. I'm the principal and I wanna welcome you to this town hall meeting. Our goal is to introduce you and our future Falcons to information about Catalina Foothills High School. This presentation will cover topics and several presenters will share information with you. If you have a general or any specific questions, there is a form for you to fill out in the YouTube description. Now, the end of the, at the end of the presentation um, or close to the end, we will answer some of those general questions and email you later this week if you have specific or individual questions. Before we begin the presentation, this is what we know about next year, our next school year. It's still uncertain, but our hope is to be returning to in-person learning. When you register for the new school year, you will see more information on what is possible, and we will continue to update families along the way during this school year and into the summer regarding the health and safety and the ability for schools to open in person. Now, please enjoy a short video from our student life at Catalina Foothills High School filmed earlier last year. Catalina Foothills is a very special school, as our administration and student body takes immense pride in exemplifying what it means to be a student athlete. Our domination in several different sports and activities, which is shown through us winning numerous state championships over the past few years, can only be matched by our academic excellence. Our school produces several Division I athletes year after year, all of which have shown academic excellence inside the classroom and through extracurricular activities. The ability of our student body to produce on the field and in the classroom is second to none and is a small part of what makes our school so special. Catalina Foothills has without a doubt one of the strongest and most spirited student bodies in all of Arizona. From going all out on spirit days to supporting our teams at home and away games, I can always count on our student body to bring the spirit. At Catalina Foothills, we pride ourselves on being the loudest, most energetic student section at any game we go to. We know that on any given day, all of our sports and clubs can compete with any team across the state and can more often than not pull out a victory. From the first day I arrived at Catalina Foothills, I was thrown into this crazy, energetic culture and have loved every second of it. I've seen several wins, but more importantly, several losses. And I'm proud to say that through thick and thin, win or lose, the student body and I will always support our Falcons. The spirit we have in our Falcon community goes beyond clubs and athletics. As we try to create a culture where everyone is celebrated and supported for their work on and off the field. My favorite part about being a student at Catalina Foothills is knowing that even after I graduate, that Falcon pride will be with me for the rest of my life. The friendships I've made and the experiences I've gained are second to none, and I'm extremely proud to be a Catalina Foothills Falcon. We are so fortunate to have a talented school um, body and a very spirited school body. And, and now I'm very proud to introduce our highly qualified and experienced administrative team. First, uh, the, the supervisor for ninth graders and over ninth grade is Mr. Eric Singer. Mr. Chris Lambert is over our 10th graders. Ms. Brock is over the 12th graders. And Mr. Tulsevic is over the 11th graders and athletics. Also, Carrie Burson is responsible for our CTE programs. You'll hear more about our JTED CTE programs tonight. 
And so I wanted you um, to meet them or at least see them tonight. Again, we're sorry we can't do this in person. On the next slide, we're gonna talk about By the Numbers and Catalina Foothills High School. It was established in 1992. Our graduating first class was in 1996. Our students succeed academically across the board. Our aims, science, Arizona merit, ACT, SAT scores have all consistently been well above both the state and national averages. Why a student and families choose Catalina Foothills? It's an incredible place to learn for a variety of reasons. We benefit from tremendous support from our community. We are able to offer rich and diverse programming for our students. We know that this is an unusual year but if you could come onto our campus, you would see students engaged in a variety and an array of endeavors. The academic success of our students' experiences here at the high school carries through to college and to other post-high school choices. We consistently hear reports from our former students that Catalina Foothills experience prepared them well uh, for their post-high school choices. Our coursework, prepares students not just for the future academic settings, but for careers and professions as well. Our curriculum is infused with hands-on, project-based and authentic tasks. Our teachers are skilled and committed. They hold high expectations for our students, both about what students can do in the classroom while they are here, but more importantly, what they will do and be able to do in the world beyond our doors. Our students have remarkable opportunities open to them to pursue their intellectual, artistic, athletic, and civic passions within the settings that value and promotes excellence. Students choose to take advantage of these opportunities and produce amazing accomplishments. I'm very proud to be a part of this outstanding school. And now you'll hear from Mr. Eric Singer. One of the things that makes Catalina Foothills such a wonderful place uh, to go to school is that not only do we offer the traditional course offerings that are required by the state of Arizona, but students have over 150 courses that they have the choice to take. Um, some of the courses that you can see on uh, your screens right now are open to all of our students. So we're talking single semester courses or full year courses or four years of a course. So something like steel drums students can take for a semester or theater they can come into for a year or two years or even beyond that. We want to make sure that students have the opportunity to delve into different things than the traditional uh, class offerings. So uh, as they build their experience here on Foothill, Foothills campus, they have a well-rounded experience um, as well as a challenging experience because for some being in a theater class might be very easy and others, it might be very challenging. So we wanna offer as many opportunities to students to challenge themselves in different ways to become better, well-rounded citizens. Uh, in addition to the courses you see on our screen, we have our advanced placement courses, we offer summer immersion experiences, uh, and we also have a host of student leadership courses. Uh, we also do provide a number of CTE options, and Ms. Carrie Burson, our CTE director, is going to talk about those. I'm going to share with you the exciting programs we have on our campus. Um, each of our programs is very robust in nature so that, as Mr. Singer said, most of the time they'll take the two to three year program um, to really get the full experience. The pathways are listed here on your screen. We do have a technical theater program, graphic design, digital photography, film and TV, business management, software programming, sports medicine, biotech, and engineering. Through these different programs, most of them are three-year programs. Our business management and our sports medicine programs, um, their senior year, these students will actually be able to participate with industry off campus through an internship opportunity. And then our biotechnology and our engineering courses are partnered with U of A, so those students will receive dual enrollment. Each pathway has unique experiences that students will 
get and prepare for industry. So the other programs, um, graphic design, digital photography, film and TV, they all lead to industry certification. So students will leave with a, a certifi certification that would make them employable right after high school or give them that competitive advantage for their post-secondary studies. Now, most of these programs start when they are a sophomore. So we'd like to let you know ahead of time because it could take two to three years out of your four-year plan so that you can look ahead of what those courses are. Freshmen are able to enroll in engineering or technical theater during their ninth grade year here at school. Another opportunity that I would um, promote or ask that you participate in is our career exploration courses if you're not quite sure what you're interested in doing. High school is a great time to explore and get opportunities. So taking this career exploration course as a freshman would give you that, that heads up and that lead to where you should spend your time for courses and for clubs to help you um, determine what your next steps are after high school. And now I'll turn it back over to Mr. Singer to talk about some videos that we have present or put together that I would recommend you looking at some of the specific courses. So typically students would have the opportunity to come on campus if they are uh, attending Orange Grove or Esperero and do a fly-in. Uh, additionally, we would offer tours and other opportunities like tonight where students uh, and families would get to know our campus and our course offerings. So not having the ability to do that, we felt like we needed the opportunity to give all families uh, to the opportunity to look at videos and to hear from our teachers directly about the different course offerings. Uh, additionally, you'll hear from some of our club advisors, uh, more from our athletic director, as well as just some other helpful videos. So to do that, all you need to do is go to the Catalina Foothills uh, High School website and you'll see a little icon right below the heading, heading of the page that says YouTube. If you click on that YouTube, you'll then go to the YouTube playlist for Falcon Fly-In, and we've got a host of a dozen or more videos there for you to understand a little bit more about uh, your choices of global issues or uh, hum humanities. Uh, you'll hear about why would you choose Honors English 9 versus regular English 9. Um, so just some opportunities for families to explore our campus and our course offerings a little bit more without the ability to be here on campus to do so. With that, I'm going to let Mr. Lambert talk a little bit about clubs and activities. Good evening. Foothills is a wonderful school for a lot of reasons that you'll hear about tonight. And one of those areas that we have to offer is a wide range of student clubs and activities. And you see a lot of them listed here on the screen. There's three types of student clubs and activities that we offer. The first type is school sponsored. And the, this consists of academic teams as well as official uh, programs where there's a teacher that serves as the coach or sponsor. A lot of these groups are competitive, uh, travel, and engage with other students from other schools in these activities. The second type of student club that we have is specifically linked to a CTE or a JTED program that Carrie Burson just spoke about. Those are in the second column. And th again, those are extensions of specific classes that are offered on campus. And they feature a competitive component in most cases uh, at, where students can travel as well. And, and again, compete against students from other schools or practice their activities or showcase their activities through community um, displays. The third type of student club or organization are student-led. We call them non-school sponsored, but they're really student interest clubs. And they can be formed on any topic that students want. All students have to do is find a teacher and a couple of other students that are interested in that activity and then they can form a club and meet on campus or right now virtually uh, to discuss any topic of their interest. And you can see there's a pretty wide range of those, those clubs from gaming to food to literature uh, to academic subjects and athletics as well. So again, if, if there's not a student activity or club on here that is of interest to your student, they're welcome to form their own. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, and they can come see us in house too and we'll, we'll help them take care of that. But again, a wide variety of clubs and activities for kids to pick from. And when your students participate in one of the fly-ins from Orange Grove or Esperero in the next few weeks, 
we will direct them to a more specific club website where each of these groups has more detailed information. Uh, they have flyers. Many of them have made videos and promotional materials that they would like for your student to see. And those will be available to them as part of the fly-in program. Good evening. I'm Ryan Tolts, the Athletic Director at Catalina Foothills High School. Um, to go along with our great academics, we offer a variety of athletic activities throughout the school years for both boys and girls to participate in. We offer 22 athletic programs that are broken into three athletic seasons, the fall, winter, and spring seasons. Our athletic programs have a great history of success. We have over 70 state titles, 35 state runner-up titles, and many other individual state run title winners. The successes that we have in our athlete, in the classrooms translate into the successes we have on our athletic platforms, fields, courts, etc. We have also had many students sign national letters of intent to further their education and athletic playing careers at the collegiate level. We want to develop the whole person academically, athletically, and socially. We figure that the best way to do this is offer a great academic and athletic school for your student to attend. If you have any further questions, please reach out to the athletic department and we all we want to welcome you all to the, the Falcon family. I'd like to introduce Ms. Randy Collier, our ninth grade counselor. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about what kind of supports we have at Catalina Foothills. Um, you may all know that school starts on August 9th this year. And on August 6th, we will be having a freshman orientation. And we also offer a new student orientation for our new students grades 10 through 12. And these, this program is, um, the orientations are run by our Link Crew program. Um, Link Crew is a mentorship transition program for our new students. And we um, have students who, uh, juniors and seniors who apply and are selected and trained for 12 hours in order to run the orientations um, this year on August 6th. So that program is wonderful, and those, those individuals that do the, the orientation will also mentor your student, your new student, for the year. So it's a really nice way for your student to get to know our campus and get to know some students right away. Um, there's, there's small group activities, so they get to know about 10 other students, and there are two leaders that will then, like I said, be mentors for the year. Um, we also have a very robust counseling department. There are six counselors. Um, we offer a variety of different um, social, emotional, academic, and post-secondary services to our students. We do one-on-one -on -one meetings with students and families. We do support groups. Um, we have a variety of ways to work with our students, um, and, and we're very appreciative of the nice staff that we have. Um, we also offer something called advisory at our school, which is once a week. For, um, it's on it's on Friday mornings and students have an opportunity to do some community building activities during this period, during the school day. And each class, it's their third period teacher, um, takes a special interest in their student and becomes another adult on campus whom they can connect with and um, keep track of. And the, the teachers will check in with the students regularly and again, offer community building activities in the classroom. And um, we, we really look at that as another nice way for your student to feel acclimated and get to know more adults on campus and in a more um, intimate way. So that's a nice way for um, your student to, again, transition to our school. We also have the Nest, which is a tutoring center, and it's available this year. It's available Monday through Thursday. Usually it is Monday through Thursday. It's usually before and after school. This year it's just after school because of um, our remote learning. But um, we do have a tutoring center, our National Honor Society Students for Community Service tutor in the nest, and it's also available during the school day. So we have a, a place for your child to get help with, with their homework um, and, and get some extra help for free um, by their peers, their upper class peers. And now I'm going to introduce to you Jesse Petrillo, our counseling department chair. 
Hi, good evening. Like Ms. Collier said, my name is Jesse Petrillo. I'm the counseling department chair. I'm also the testing coordinator, so I'll be talking to you a little bit later about our AP program. Um, but I want to start first with student registration um, because I know that's kind of at the forefront of everyone's mind right now. So there's um, two different areas, if you will, of the registration. So there's the actual registration to school. Um, and we have that for open enrollment families, so families that live out of the district, and then for families that live in district. So there's the registration piece and then the course selection piece. Um, so for registration, if you do live out of district, you would need to complete the open enrollment application on the district website. The priority deadline was yesterday, but um, you can still apply as space is available and you'll get notified kind of on a rolling basis. Um, if you did apply before yesterday's deadline, there you should get a notification, I believe, by March 1st. Um, if you live in district, you would then um, you would fill out the registration information on the school website. Um, and I'm sorry, I should say that once you are accepted for open enrollment, you then complete the, um, the registration stuff that's on the school website. So there's a couple steps there for open enrollment families. Um, so once you're registered for school, you will um, have an appointment with a counselor if you're in 10th through 12th grade. Um, you'll get an email with some information and then we'll set a new to district student meeting. So we'll go through your transcripts um, and we'll figure out what courses you will take. If you need to take a placement test for math, we'll get you set up with that. Um, you may have to do some placement for world language as well. Um, so for 10th through 12th graders, you will have an appointment. If you are a new to district ninth grader, Ms. Collier will send you all of the information you need in an email. Um, and if you are an Orange Grove or Esperero student, you will get all of the course selection information in your fly-in. So for Orange Grove, um, you'll get all that info from Ms. Collier tomorrow and Esperero next week. Um, so you will have everything you need. And then um, also, if you are an out of district student, you have the opportunity to join us for a CFHS Connect Day. So we have one in February, one in March, and one in April. Um, and you would register for this Connect Day and you would have a Google Meet basically with a counselor and some student council students. Um, so as you register, you would fill out information about your current school, your grade level, what you're interested in, so certain classes or clubs and activities, um, something you want to know about Catalina Foothills. And during that Google Meet, uh, we would put you in breakout rooms, so you'd be with a student council member and be able to ask them questions about day-to-day -day at Catalina Foothills. Um, if you're interested in band, what's the band program like, um, you know, what are performances like, so on and so forth. Um, so in a normal year, we have students physically on campus shadowing, so this has kind of replaced it. It's, it's a virtual connection day, um, and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions to both the counselor and student council members. This is not your course selection appointment, so it would not be when you choose classes. Um, it's just more of an opportunity to learn more about um, the programs and the classes we offer. So there will be a registration link on the website soon, um, but there is also a link posted on this slide um, that you can make note of and like I said we will um, we will be opening that quite soon all right so we have a little break here from the presentation for some questions um, so we have a few and Ms. Burson there's a couple on JTED and CTE classes so I'll start with those um, the first one is a question about CTE classes for freshmen. And I know that you did talk about theater or technical theater and career explorations, but the question is, is there any possibility of a freshman taking any other type of CTE classes? Um, and can you a little, explain a little bit about why that may or may not be? Yes, of course. So in the state of Arizona, freshmen are not uh, funded for our CTE program. There are a few of them that we have available, and that is engineering and then technical theater. The first year of technical theater is really that exploratory to see if they like the stagecraft behind the scenes portion, or would they rather go into the acting theater part? So that's why we make that one open to freshmen. 
Um, in the past, our engineering program was four years, so that one was open to freshmen so they can complete the four years, but currently we're running a three-year program, but we left that prerequisite open for freshmen. So those are the only two courses that we have available, um, and many districts are in the same way. They don't offer them to freshmen. But um, Mr. Lambert went over clubs. So if you are a student who's interested in the sports medicine pathway or you're interested in the business pathway, I really recommend that you join that club your freshman year because you start to get those experiences. Awesome, thank you. The next question is also about um, CTE and JTED. Um, a question about biotech. Can you give a little bit of explanation as to what that class is and when students can take it? So that's a unique course in which you would also get your science credits for it because it will prepare you for the state testing after your junior year. It encompasses all the essential standards for chemistry um, and physics and our um, life sciences. So the course is, um, we have our applications our first year and it's kind of the fundamentals of our biotech. You learn a lot about lab procedures. And then our second year, is the dual enrollment class with the University of Arizona. We are currently building our third year, so next year will be our first implementation of the third year, which will also be a dual enrollment class with the University of Arizona. And for students who continue from our second year to our third year, they have some lab opportunities at the university. Um, we have STAR Labs, and then we also have a Steps to STEM opportunity, which is an internship over the summer that they can apply to. So there's many opportunities we have having that partnership with U of A. Um, and then it also will prepare them for their, their it, it'll be their sophomore, junior, and senior science credits. Thank you. Um, the next question is for Mr. Talsovic, and it's the first one is in regards to tryouts for sports. Um, when do students find out when tryouts are for certain sports and certain seasons, and how do they go about um, doing that, and what's the process in becoming involved in sports? Okay, thank you. The, the, first, um, the first part of the process is getting an uh, athletic physical packet turned in. You have to have a, a doctor um, basically release you saying you're, that you're physically fit to participate in athletics. Um, you would turn that into house four, which is um, where the athletic department is. Um, tryouts are based on each individual program. Um, so it really depends on what program that is. What we're doing now is we're actually, if you email us, we are actually giving you the coaches um, email, school email address, and you would reach out to the coach for further information on what tryouts would be and when. Most start, you know, the um, fall sports usually start in July. Winter sports usually start in October, late October, early November, and then spring sports usually start in um, early February. So that's when the tryout period would be. We also communicate through information going home through the Falcon um, flyer to the parents. Um, our website is full of information as well. So everything should be up to date on our athletic website and always a phone call or email to me would be um, fine as well. And if they're curious as to when a certain sports season is, that's also on the website, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and the next question um, is about summer school for PE and health. Are we having it? When's that information coming out? What what do we know so far? Yes, we, we plan on offering that um, PE and health um, through community schools. We will work with community schools to offer that those two programs. Um, the information is a little vague right now, just working around the, the pandemic um, and COVID issues. So we are, that's still in the works, but that should be um, up and, and going here very soon. Um, but reach out to the community school's uh, website and that, that's where you'll find that information. Perfect, thank you. Um, and I think the next one might be for a counselor. So Ms. Collier, Ms. Pachilla, if you could answer the question regarding freshman schedules. Um, questions about how many electives freshmen can take and kind of what the freshman course load looks like. I can answer that. So our freshmen typically take English they take a social studies called global issues. They take a math class. They take biology or honors biology. And then they take usually a world language, either Spanish or Chinese. 
and they take one semester of health and one semester of PE, and then they have one a chance a space for one elective or a study hall. So we've talked a little bit about health and PE over the summer. That's an option for students that just can't decide between theater and engineering or band and choir. You know, they really want to take both electives. So that's why they some students will opt to take the health and PE over the summer. Um, but essentially, they have room in their schedule for one um, one elective class. Great, thank you. Okay, um, I think there's one more sports question, Mr. Talasovic, and it has to do with um, if a sport has a summer training program or an off-season training program, do you need to participate in that in order to be in the sport? No, that is not, a, it's not mandatory, but it'd be very helpful for you to, to participate um, in the, the preseason workouts. Um, we have an off-season liability waiver that you would you would fill out and to par participate in that activity. Um, but it would definitely benefit you as a student athlete to participate in preseason work. So, great, thank you. Okay, I think that that's all for now that pertain to the whole group. And I think, as Ms. Brazi said at the beginning, if there was specific questions that were individual, we have your email when you ask the question, and we will reach out to you um, by the end of. Wednesday or tomorrow to answer your questions. And we can keep filling this form out if you have questions as we continue. It'll be open. Thank you. So at this point, we are going to transition to talking more about our AP courses here at the high school. Uh, we realize that a half hour is nowhere near enough time to understand what our offerings are here at Catalina Foothills High School or what it feels like to be here on campus. And, and that's why we really recommend uh, you participating in one of, um, one of our three uh, sessions that our counseling department is hosting with our student council members. And we also encourage you to go onto our high school website and explore those video offerings just to get a better feel for some of our teachers on campus as well as uh, some of the academic offerings we have here. Uh, we want to thank those of you who are here just to hear that information. Um, if you want to stay on and learn more about our AP programs, which are not uh, generally available to our ninth graders, they are for our sophomores and beyond, um, you're more than welcome to stay. Uh, but we definitely want to make sure that um, there's a transition. You know, you do not have to stay uh, as a parent if you're not interested or student. So, uh, Ms. P Jesse Petrillo, our, our department chair for our counseling department, will talk more about the uh, offerings for AP classes. Thank you, Mr. Singer. So um, as Mr. Singer said earlier, we have 23 um, AP courses at the high school. Um, AP is the Advanced Placement Program. It's run through College Board, and that's the company that administers SAT and PSAT as well. Um, and so Advanced Placement classes are great for students because it's that college rigor at the high school level. Um, so there's, there's 38 courses in total. We offer 23 of them. So Foothills has a really wide selection of AP, ex or AP courses and therefore exams. Um, so students can really get used to the structure of a college class, but still having the supports that Foothills offers. Um, and so if students are really passionate about a particular subject area um, or really want to develop certain skills, so for example, research skills or la uh, language skills or writing skills, um, AP classes are great. So um, there's a lot of really good reasons to take an AP class. Um, we encourage students to look at the course guide. Um, it's on our website right now that has the AP course descriptions. And in just a minute, I will show you a table that has all the ones that we do offer. Um, and you can always go on College Board's website. Um, so I'm going to show you now, or Mr. Singer will, the 23 courses that we offer. So you can see the different content areas um, and the grade levels where students take those classes. Um, you'll see there aren't grade levels associated with the math and the world language classes just because that kind of varies based on skill level um, and prerequisite knowledge. Um, so a few in each subject area. You'll notice um, calculus, there's calculus A, B, and B, C. Um, AB is going to be one semester of college math, BC is going to be two semesters, so BC is going to be a little bit more rigorous and fast-paced for students. 
Um, and then just various offerings in the different content areas. Um, one unique program that we offer is gonna be AP Capstone. And you can see that down at the bottom that consists of AP Seminar and AP Research. Um, and AP Capstone is really great because it gives students the opportunity to do some exploration um, and investigative um, research and really find something they're passionate about and delve into that. Um, I've read some of the, the um, outlines for research this year and it's just students being able to find something that fascinates them and learn more about it. Um, so we are, uh, not many schools offer the capstone program, so I'm really glad that we do. Um, there are some classes that do require prerequisites, um, so like the math and the sciences, especially, um, whereas English, social studies, it's going to be more um, kind of a as desired basis. Um, so grade nine um, will only be math. Um, and it's if you are very advanced in math, but then 10, 11, 12 options really open. The big thing with AP courses is keeping that balance. So it's kind of knowing what you're getting into. Um, if you're a student that really wants to go to a highly selective school, yes, they are gonna wanna see AP courses on your schedule. However, it's really important to have that balance. A lot of our students are athletes or involved in various clubs or extracurriculars. Um, and while you do want to challenge yourself, you don't want to get overwhelmed. So it's that informed decision of, you know, exactly what is this class going to entail? Um, what else am I doing? And just being able to balance everything. And counselors are always happy to have those conversations with students. Um, and teachers are always happy to have those conversations as well. Um, it is a year long commitment. Um, unless it's one of the semester long, either government or economics classes. Um, so we do expect you to stay in a class once you have agreed to it and we do have you sign an AP agreement. Um, so it's just really knowing, again, what you're getting into. Um, and just some information about AP exams. So um, these are kind of averages over the last five years or so. We usually have about five, four to 500 students, different students um, enrolled in AP classes and registered for AP exams. Um, we, we administer anywhere between eight and 900 exams and we kind of have a range of 78 to 82% of our exams passed. So that's a three, four or five. Um, and we always get the question of, you know, well, I don't think I'm gonna do well, should I test? Yes, you should. Um, it's an end of course exam. You wanna see what you have learned. Um, and you know, these again are rigorous classes. So you wanna, you wanna try and show off your knowledge. Uh, there's just some quick facts on here about exams in case you're curious. This can vary year to year because it's information that the college board sets. Um, but just so you know, in general, exams occur the first two weeks of May. So they are spring tests. Um, currently, the exam fee is $95 per exam, and again, that is set by the College Board. Um, and there's an online portal that students register through. They can connect to an AP classroom, and you know, teachers can provide resources and information. Um, and there's much more information on the counseling website if you're interested in that. Um, and there's also, you know, you can earn college credit. That's one of the big reasons students take AP exams, and I just wanted to um, point to families that you can check the College Board website or a college and university website for that credit information if you're ever interested. I want to apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, we came to the end of our presentation for tonight. I'm just building on some things that um, Ms. Petrillo had said about AP. Um, as students, what we know from research is as students register for AP courses, um, students who complete an AP course, whether they take a test or not, are um, more aligned with having college success. Uh, additionally, a student who takes a course and takes the test, whether they pass or not, um, they are more aligned with having college success. And then the next piece obviously would be if they 
take the class, take a test, and pass the test. Um, the indicators are for college success, and college success meaning completing a, a degree uh, within four years. So we highly encourage students to take it, to try it. Um, we also provide supports. There are student groups that offer support um, and study groups and whatnot. Um, and again, when you look at 80% of our students receiving credit, and you think about the dollars that that turns into for families, um, you know, as, as a parent myself, I highly encouraged my daughter to take AP courses. So um, again, just to kind of wrap it up, we want to thank you for, for spending this time with us tonight. We will post this video in case there is something that you missed and you want to go back and see. Uh, additionally, we'll make sure that uh, those videos are available to you um, that we spoke of earlier uh, regarding our course offerings here at the high school. Uh, there's also more information about AP uh, within there uh, presented by a couple of our AP teachers. Um, there's information from our counseling departments about athletics. Um, so it's a wide array of information. Feel free to reach out to us as uh, administrators or to the counselors for any other questions you might have. And if you have more questions tonight, feel free just to register those questions on the document that is in the description uh, below. Uh, with that, Ms. Brazi, any final words? Yes, I just want to thank you for joining tonight. We know we've uh, dumped many things on you tonight, and we know you're going to still have further questions, as Mr. Singer said. We're always open for emails. Even if it's a month from now, send us an email. We're happy to answer questions. Again, we wish we could be together tonight, and we know we will be soon, and we look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, can't wait to get to know your students, again, through our Falcon uh, days that we're going to be offering here this week and, and next and those connect days as well. So stay tuned and we will send out uh, information through the middle schools as well and post things on our website. So stay connected. And again, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.